We're here. We're here. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the very first Follow the Boat public live stream broadcast. Oh, how do you feel? I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm excited because it's uh, been a long time coming, but I'm equally very nervous yeah. about, I think mainly about the internet connection more than anything, uh, which brings me on to a point that I should make. If you look in the description, there is a link which is our generic live streaming link. So if we lose connection, we might have to reset something at this end. So just bear with us. And uh, if we lose connection altogether, then just use that, that link. So just had to get that out of the way. There are so many people in the chat already. This is, this is ridiculous. From was... all over the world. I mean, in uh, West Coast America, it's seven o'clock. So thank you so much guys for getting up so early. And some Australians, it's really late. It's late in, in <laughs> Oz, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's incredible. So, quick shout out to uh, who have we got? So, we, we should mention Mobile Tech. Uh, that's Larry. Hi, Larry. And uh, we watched uh, Larry's own YouTube channel this morning. Yeah, it was good to see another live stream. Which is fascinating. Larry, uh, he basically refurbishes trailers, which you call trailers in the States. In the UK, we call them caravans and uh, it was very interesting watching his live stream and of course there's a lot of similarities between caravanning trailers rvs and boating and uh we'll, we'll come on to that in a bit i think but anyway larry good to see you uh there's john from scotland uh who else we've got let's let's quickly well, we had up. costa rica i saw earlier Can't uh, remember who we, it we've was. got elaine from who's currently in greece and um, will good to see you, will thanks for joining us lisa Desmond's Donders, there's a name that uh, you know we uh, we see every now and then. And guitar bloke, and Randy Thorne. Jeff, good to see you, Jeff. Go hard, uh, Claire. Claire, there's, there's so many guys. We're not going to spend the whole stream name checking. Be you, really boring. So, you can so, see it down there. Yeah, you know who you are. I was just going to say. You go so, on then. Talking of the live stream. Um, obviously, we're going to be monitoring it, uh, which is why we'll be half looking at the camera and looking at the live stream. If you have a burning question that you are desperate to get answered and you can't wait for us to get around to answering it and you need it answered right now, there is a little uh, icon in the stream and it's a dollar sign and that's Super Chat. And if you click that, you pay a little donation. It's like a tip jar, I suppose. Yeah. And it's like buy us a beer sort of thing. And uh, that puts your question up in big highlights yeah so, so if, that, if we've missed it you keep putting it up and we keep missing it that's a way of it, of getting your question across but we're going to try and do what we can uh we are going to start off we're trying to keep the theme of pros and cons of live aboard but you're all such renegades we've had a whole load of questions that have got nothing to do with that uh but we've got a lot of questions that have also got something to do with that so we've split them into about seven topics so we're going to try and stick to those topics as we go through yeah, and if you again, if you look in the description, we've actually uh, listed those sort of broad topics and that's going to be the kind of structure for this live broadcast. So I think if you do have questions, have a quick look through those topic areas. Yeah. And if you've got a particular question that you feel will fall into that topic area, then then wait until we move on to that. Yes, subject. but I do have to answer one very important question immediately, and that's where's Millie? <laughs> yeah. Millie is hunting wabbits. She's out there. Um, it's 10 o'clock at night, so it's her time of the evening. Yeah, isn't it? she's very active now, and we do let her off the boat in the marina. She doesn't go very far. She jumps onto the pontoon and has a little walk around, and occasionally meets another cat, and we hear all about that. So she may turn up if she does. I'm sure she'll come and sit with us and she'll say hello. Yeah, I hope so. Hopefully, she'll come down and she'll come and say hi to Michael in Portsmouth. And uh, Rianne and Matt, Dexter, Ben, Serge, lo loads more people. And we've got Dan in the Midwest, so good to see you as um, well. And Paul from Canberra, it's midnight. Well done, mate. Yeah, Thank thanks for staying, staying up. up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have, have a beer for us. Yeah. Well, we haven't had a beer yet. Yeah, so I want one. If I, I think, disappear, I'm getting the beers. I think halfway through, we'll crack <laughs> open a tinny. Yeah. So the intro then, so uh, okay. we have a little intro here which we'd like to read to you and it's from Mal Lawrence, it came to us via email and Mal says, 
I don't really have any questions for you. I already know the pros and cons of being a liverboard. The pros are beautiful anchorages, freedom, joy of sailing, self-sufficiency, heading off to new destinations, meeting other cruisers, etc, etc. Very true. Cons are initial cost of buying a boat, the cost of maintaining the boat, the cost of living on a boat, working on the boat, diving to scrub the hull, rough weather and being away from the family. So that's just about it. Then that's yeah, the end well. of the Liverpool. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you've summed it all up for us. You so uh, we may as well uh, finish this live broadcast early and uh, get on the pub. Yeah, he clearly knows his stuff. Actually, you know, today uh, a friend of ours, you remember Gabby in uh, Greece, uh, who we met in Turkey? Yeah. And she also replied saying, there is no discussion. Yes. Because there are no cons to being a liverboard. And I really like that sentiment. I love that feeling. I do beg to differ slightly on yes. one or two subjects, but... Uh, it, it, I wouldn't say I particularly agree with that. No. And that is why we're here now to discuss the pros and cons of being a liverboard. Yeah. So we're going to start with our first section, which is moving onto a boat. When you first start the boat, there are a couple of things um, that we need to think about. So really, uh, we'll, 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 we'll read Kev from Patreon's message and he says how did you adapt to living on the boat in a much smaller space than your home and without all the usual mod cons and mobile tech larry he also says i used to live and work aboard a 55 foot yawl my biggest problem was the tight quarters and i was always bumping my head how do you feel about the tight quarters and do you bump your heads a lot well basically we're talking downsizing living in a smaller space and do we bump our heads what do you say to that yeah, well, I'd love to say, of course, that we never bump our head because we have been on this boat for 11 years now. We know her inside out and... Um, we can know. walk around her in, in the dark, of night course, sailing, don't need any front. lights on. Of course, you know, Larry, you know how it is. It's a lie. Uh, I have a permanent scab on the top of my head where I am constantly scraping myself through the, uh, the doorways down below inside the boat. Uh, you always hit your head on the boom. Yeah, because when I hang the laundry up or do things on the back, I always forget that the mizzen's quite as far as it is, and I might, if I'm standing on the raised area, bang, the head goes, and you can hear all kinds of expletives coming from me when I'm doing that. <laughs> so really, in a nutshell, we've usually got bruises and usually got cuts on us somewhere. Yeah, and I, you know, this is one of the cons of moving onto a boat is that it is all about downsizing, and it's a big thing and i think it's something that a lot of people who want to move on to a boat are really concerned about we we know tall people mm -hmm. who struggle to find a comfortable boat to live on mm -hmm. um because you know on average i'd say most of this boat certainly is around about six foot one six foot two clearance just tall enough highest. for us yeah, yeah. it's good uh, and taller people struggle so when well, we know two boats small boats very um, low ceilings with enormous men on them don't we yeah they're six foot four and yeah. 30 foot boats and we don't know how they manage it but uh, yeah so it is a it is a, a thing that uh, we have to consider and what I would say is that I think if you have a background of camping mm -hmm caravanning mm, both of which you have by yep. the way to the person that asked uh, then that's really going to help the idea of downsizing and letting go of uh, half your possessions yeah. out, out of necessity is something that actually is a positive thing I say yeah. that's a pro rather than a con yeah I mean downsizing is something you seriously have to consider when you start unless you've got very kind people who are going to look after all your stuff at home family and friends or of course you can put it into storage they don't have to lose anything we had a three-story house in London that was packed with stuff didn't have anywhere to put it we had a tiny bit of storage my mum took some of it but most of it we had to get rid of so we sold some bits we gave some to charity we gave bits away and what what we couldn't get rid of went in the bin. Um, I found it very difficult to get rid of my books. I had floor to ceiling shelves full of books and being in the fashion industry, as you can see, for 25 years, I had a lot of clothes and it was very difficult to get rid of them, but I had to do it. And yeah. you had a problem as well. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, finding Jesse Reed says he has the same scar. <laughs> yeah. um, we've got James who says, I have one bulkhead near the head that I often bonk. <laughs> yes lovely <laughs> <laughs> and to uh rob i got told off by rob he says look at the camera jamie uh we, we 
have the chat here so we're kind of trying to keep an eye on the chat whilst talking to the camera as well yeah, so when you're talking talk there and uh hey bobby good to see bobby as well that's boy and my friend from back home in, in the uk so that's great as well um yeah so downsizing uh, yeah so you didn't want to get rid of all your trainers and you, there's a lot of clothes you didn't want to get off and um, more importantly your records records my yeah. Bo bobby my friend bobby uh, back home will understand this you know two great big turntables for djing those kind of things which meant a lot to me uh relatively insignificant i guess um oh we've got oh we've got our first super chat <laughs> Cheers, <Emma>. drop everything <laughs> working in the engine compartment was the worst i have a scab on my head to this day exactly so Larry. true <laughs> unless you've got an enormous boat or you've built the boat round your engine all co engine compartments on yachts are crap everything's down here and under there he has to hold me by my toes as I have to go down the side and reach things. And yes, I think both of us get covered in blood every time we have to do anything. Cheers, Larry. Yeah, always got cuts, bruises and scars. Yeah, yeah so just going back to the downsizing, it, it is a con, it is difficult, but on the, on the pro side, as you were saying earlier, it's actually quite a cathartic thing. You do realise how much rubbish you've got that you've accumulated over the years, invested with things that they don't you know they're just things they're just things so getting rid of them painful at the time but it's a short sharp like pulling a tooth once it's gone you feel a whole lot better and we just have on the boat what we need although having said that we have accumulated rather a lot more than when we started off with uh, personally I don't see it now as a problem I think it's a pro so what uh, so that was um, I think that's we've answered that question pretty much um, living oh. in a small space, bumping heads and downsides. Although Andrew and Deb's point, uh, also patrons who asked, um, how do you manage your referee the disagreements about stuff? I mean, actually our spaces are fairly well defined on the boat, aren't they? So we've got each side of the, the bunk in the cabin and we each have enough space for our clothes. And then we've got our own work areas as well. So Liz has her own office in the front and I have the chart table, which we've customised. So um, in that respect, it's it's quite good. We don't really have arguments. No, about we don't on the whole. If you can stuff it into your lockers, that's your concern. It will, if you can find it, um, I've got a little place up the front as well. So, yeah, we both just um, kind of get on with it, really. There's a really good question here. Oh, no. Oh, no, we've just got to... Drop everything. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Another super chat question. Oh, okay. Have you met any liverboards from other non-European racial backgrounds? I'm Indian. Will I be accepted? It's 2017, but these things make a difference, and that's from G or GS. Uh, very good question. Yeah, topical. And really interesting. We, we are actually about to talk about that in... Uh, I think in the next section when we discuss yeah, uh, the, the third section we're going to be discussing interacting with people and we do talk about this um, so thing is GS remember we were in India ourselves for three years so we were the foreigners there and we met plenty of Indian sailors and they were great we're still friends with some of them we don't tend to see many Indian sailors here in Southeast Asia we meet plenty of Indian tourists and of course in Malaysia there's a big Indian community. But I guess you're talking about um, racism and sort of bigotry and that sort of thing. And I think it exists in all, sadly, through all sorts walks of life yeah there is some of it in cruising um if we meet people like that we don't have anything to do with them it's not something we're prepared to tolerate but on the whole i would say most cruisers are fairly worldly world thinkers and they're yeah. fairly inclusive and as a sailor you always try to help each other it doesn't matter what your background I think so. is i think liz makes a good point that uh, the sailing community is representative of pretty much the global com community you have your good good eggs and your bad eggs yeah. um so i would say as an indian i don't see why you'd have any problems and of course no. especially in asia where you have a strong minority of indian malays yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so it's easy here go yeah. for it go for it yeah, absolutely just got another question here finding just one. read yeah um thank you very much i'll read it out you can answer so okay. would you agree that the hardest thing is leaving the boat for any amount of time i have my 32 on a mooring and i won't see her for four days so i'm always so scared to get a phone call 
but I hate being paranoid. Cheers. Mm. Yeah, gosh, we know that feeling. We've yes. got the boat to worry about and Millie, so we tend to try and not leave. I think when we first started, uh, we never left Esper out of no. sight. So if we took the dinghy ashore uh, in Turkey, we'd climb up the mountains, but we'd always be just close enough that if anything were to happen, we could race back down. We weren't so confident of our anchor or our anchoring technique when we started, yeah. and that does take practice. Yeah. And as we've gone along, so we've left the boat at anchor for longer periods of time. Now, you mentioned being on a mooring. That's quite interesting because we have this rule that mm. we feel happier on our own anchor than mm. we do on a mooring because unless you've laid mm. that mooring yourself or you watched it being laid mm. then you just don't know how good a quality that that mooring is and I think that's a generality for most old cruisers we all feel the same we all feel much more confident in our own ground tackle than something that's been put down there mm. if you've got no choice like for instance when we were in pee pee and there's just a tiny area and you can only allow to take a mooring you go down, you dive, you check it out, you just see what you're wrapped around to give you any idea of how much safety you've got. But yeah, it is a, it is a yeah, we don't like leaving the boat. It's home. Yeah, and um, yeah, four days, I mean, that's that's quite a long time. Presumably you're going to have uh, people around you maybe that will have your phone number just in case of an emergency. Uh, I think the biggest problem is not so much just, just the moorings, but it's other people around you. So if the wind picks up, or changes direction or the tide changes you know what's the chance of other boats dragging their anchors That's and dragging onto problem. you yeah because when you're not on the boat you don't know about it yeah i mean we had that storm when we were down in in Kua in Langkawi, and it really came it's typical um sumatra that came through really really fast and very very furious we were okay so we would have been fine but there was a boat dragging straight towards us and that was pretty hairy so it's not just about you it's about what's around you good question yeah uh, marco asks your maintenance foods are some of the best on youtube thank you very oh, informative uh, any chance of oh his uh, question's just gone any chance of a vid on sailing backups to cruise do you know what that means i didn't quite understand that Where if you we? can you clarify marco what you mean by that yeah and um serge had just come through with how do i super chat laugh out laugh <laughs> <laughs> you got it uh, nice love one. all your videos thank you and thank you so kind thank you very much we weren't expecting this it's just one of those things that video that youtube throws in so it's fantastic but you are getting your questions answered um rob will we be in bali uh probably oh. not but it would be nice to get down there let's stay in touch yeah um because yeah. our sailing plans may change now uh circumstances have changed so uh, we haven't got to worry about me having to go back to the uk so kind of things have opened up we're mm. not ruling anything out uh yeah we've got um lots and lots more questions here i like this one because that kind of goes with what we were saying uh, it's from mike sawyer hi mike when you need alone time do you each have do not disturb places by the way love you guys love you too yeah that's a good question wow i go up there and he stands he stays down here he goes ashore i stay on the boat yeah you do i mean it is hard when you're 24 7 together in a small space you do need time alone and i should say for the first year we had to kind of knock the corners off each other so that we fitted together a bit better and you can tell when the other one needs to be quiet he doesn't really talk until he's had his second coffee and i'm a bit of a rabbit mouther in the morning so we've learned to deal with that <laughs> uh, that actually that again it's a really good point when mm. Liz and I first met and obviously we were much younger and I was much younger yeah, we were and, young, pretty, slim. and and there there was a very steep learning curve yeah. both in terms of just us and our relationship with each other but also when we moved on to the boat and um, you know I don't mind admitting the we'd have some pretty blazing rows yeah, we did <laughs> And I think it was partly to do with the fact that you couldn't get away from each other. Yeah. But it also was also partly a kind of an, an immaturity of our relationship on the boat. Yeah. And that is something that has, you know, got better over yeah, time. Yeah, but it is about being on the boat. I mean, we know older couples that have been together for years and they finally, the children have grown and they're ready to go off and do, take, do their adventure. But they've never spent time together in closed proximity like this. So... We talk about that, we have a whole video uh, in our Q&As, we'll put a link to it when this uh, goes up on um, on YouTube. It's a good one, it is a good one and it is important. What are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
What a great question from Barney8282. I love this question. Being British, how do you deal with running low on tea bags? <laughs> <laughs> it never, ever happens. Oh, that's, tick that's tickled me. That really has. <laughs> We don't drink as much tea perhaps as other British people. We do rely on coffee in the mornings and I like to make fresh tea. That's a difficult thing. I prefer fresh tea to tea bags, but very good, very good. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to answer this one. Yeah, okay. SV Barry Duckworth. Yes. James, uh, are one of you messier or neater than the other and does it cause friction sometimes? Oh, He's a messy one, I'm she brilliant. Is and he terrible. just leaves crap everywhere all the time. I'm always you know, picking the thing up is, after is that him. She thinks he that does she something, so he leaves it all out all over the Not floor and then I come back and, and I And she has a go at me for things that she does all the time, like leaves that inverter on every morning, for God's sake. Does that answer <laughs> your question? <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, okay, so I think we've finished that topic. We have spent 20 minutes on the first of seven topics, so we're going to be here into the morning at this rate. So let's just go on to the next one. And uh, meanwhile, Jamie will keep a, a look on at what's going on. So the next topic within the topic was leaving family and friends behind. Uh, we thought this was going to be quite a big one, but in fact, we only got one. Yeah, really surprised by that. Message. We yeah. thought that uh, this topic would be something you'd all be really concerned yeah. about, but clearly, you are just desperate to get on that boat, sail into the sunset, and leave your family and friends behind and never think about them again. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's an important one, though, because if you are very close to your family and your friends, and if your world is propped up with the people around you, when you're suddenly not there, it is quite difficult it is quite difficult and if you've got those ties on the other side of the world it's not so easy to get back as you know if you've been watching our story it's been for me so it is a real difficult one I've got a, a specific one here from uh, Lee Shuto she's not with us now but I know she's going to watch it tomorrow thanks Lee for this question she says if it's too personal deep I understand but Liz I know your mum passed away very recently and my deepest condolences thank you I also have a mum that's ageing and I'm the only person to help and take care of things. I'm not complaining, she's amazing and one of my best friends. Did you have support to help with your mum? Did you have guilt about being away so far? And if so, how did you manage? We'd like to start our journey and are actually preparing, but my mum is the one thing truly keeping us from going. So it actually works at both ends of the scale. If you've got very small children, for some people that's a reason not to leave yet. Um, and of course, we often forget the other end of the scale when we've got very, very old parents who are nearing the end of their lives. Do we feel that we need to be staying with them? Well, in my personal case, I was very lucky. My brother lives at home near my mum and we also had a pretty much full time carer. So I knew she was in excellent hands and they stayed in contact with me. So I knew what was going on all the time. All sounds great, doesn't it? No, you're still full of guilt. And I thought about her a lot. And I have to admit that over the last two years, it has impacted somewhat on our sailing plans and living on the boat, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think it's dictated uh, where we cruise yeah. in that we always wanted to be near an airport um, so that Liz could jump on the plane very quickly. And uh, yeah, and it's been a it's been at the back of Liz's mind all the time. Mm. And uh, when she, of course, when she then goes away for a month or two at a time to the UK, I'm on my own and I'm not necessarily prepared to go off and do long distances on my own. Um, so yeah, that does, that can have an, a big, big impact. And it's not just dying relatives. It's just, you know, my, my parents yeah. still very fit and healthy, but you know, they're getting older and I have nieces and nephews that they're growing up. You're they're not seeing they're growing up and they're growing up quickly and you get, a, a, an email or a photo once every six months or maybe you go back once a year and you see those step changes and it's like whoa you know I, I you, and again you start to feel a bit guilty that perhaps you should be staying more in touch with your family and friends I think it's an inevitable thing you have to be prepared to let that go to some degree mm. now it's a little bit easier for us when we started in Turkey because we were only four hours uh, fly uh, flight away yeah we nipped back quite often didn't we so it was a bit a bit easier yeah. as we've moved further afield uh, my friends certainly uh, started to have their own families mm. so of course their priorities changed so I saw less of those people um, so yeah it, it's it's a thing it's a thing that you have to yeah. be it is a consideration. I think perhaps some people planning this 
have put it to one side um, and haven't thought about it, but do think about it. You will be a long way from your friends and family and are you prepared to do that? Perhaps you won't know until you actually start doing it. One of the things that we have seen over all the years we've been doing this is older people who suddenly become grandparents and that is the biggest reason I reckon that we've seen anecdotal uh, mm. for people stopping the sailing life. Well we've got uh, Matt. Matt Reynolds here says he has an eight-year-old daughter who lives with her mum and she's the one reason why I haven't untied the lines there you and go. you know it's a perfect example of that. Lisa says being the only child leaving my aging mum is a big concern of mine too especially if you know if you're the only child. I know Lisa. Um, I mean look I have two younger brothers um, but I'd like to think that they know that I would not leave them to look after and care for my parents if and when they get to that stage. So that's kind of, I guess, the next thing for us, isn't it? Yeah. And it's something that we have to think about. Yeah, it is. So it's there. Think about it. Uh, it's not an easy one. Uh, and actually, it's every case is individual and different. So. Yeah. Okay, so we'll leave that one. Um, Just a quick shout out to Rob, Rob Psycho. Share some old pictures of yourselves. And I am an iced tea drinker. <laughs> Hi Amanda and Rianne and M Gonzalez. You go, we go. Good to see you guys. And Emily, uh, if you're not ready, then if you don't, if you think you've got problems, then you're probably not ready. Just really think it through. Try maybe some shorter breaks and then make them bigger i don't know but it is something to really work through maybe talk to your family you're only in your 30s mm. so it should be you know you're young it's a great opportunity if you can do it i think it's great if you do can it, start when now. you're younger do it if you can yeah. do it do it now yeah and then and just pop back and see them yeah yeah okay have Any we more? i think let's have a quick look here um so andrew says i have a 13 year old daughter yeah. she lives with her mother but is at my place each weekend and again she's what's keeping me from sailing away i mean hopefully andrew when she turns 16 18 or however old you deem her to be independent you know that's the time of course that uh, you'll be able to spend some quality time with her mm. uh, you know on the boat mm, mm. Um, uh richard says have you ever been hurt by being so emotionally open and public um I think we've developed fairly rhinoceros hides when it comes to trolling and nasty comments and I have to say we are I think very lucky on follow the boat we have an incredible extraordinary caliber of follower uh, if you look yeah. at the comments that you see on YouTube and Facebook they are erudite they're intelligent um, and I think it's a huge help to us really the people that follow us are really really engaging and uh, I think they encourage us yeah uh, it's important as well we we have to be honest and talk about this and this is why we're doing this particular um, broadcast about the pros and cons because we want to be completely honest about yeah. it so by being honest about these subjects we kind of have to be honest about ourselves and yeah. each other as well yeah uh, there's no point in painting a pretty picture of situations and scenarios where um, it's not always the case so there we go okay Ashraf we're going to talk about food in a minute um, yeah that, by the way Ashraf uh, looking forward to catching yeah. up with you tomorrow and thanks for tuning in yeah okay so I think perhaps we'll go on to the next subject um, which is kind of follows on it's about people again and this is interacting with people it's a general one so we're looking at interacting with local people and of course interacting with with other yachts uh, mm. which you should do a lot if you're cruising it's part of the fun it's meeting people it's not just visiting amazing places learning culture and and uh, history it's meeting people so jocelyn kindell denson on facebook says when meeting other cruisers and locals do you get a lot of questions about politics <laughs> uh, i hear when traveling it can be it can be a hot a hot topic for some so yeah so you get politics um with locals less and you can get politics with other yachts in bars late when you've had a few drinks it's inevitable it's the way of life isn't it guaranteed when you go down to your local boozer on a friday night invariably you will have a heated discussion with your mates or with new acquaintances on politics and if you're not careful of course it can turn it can turn quite quite nasty yes <laughs> so and, and i think one thing you have to remember when you're if you're a yachty and you're in a bar uh in say a shore of the anchorage or by the marina and you have a blazing row with a whole bunch of people and you 
put yourself into a bit of mischief. And then you go out next day and you get into trouble whilst you're at sea and you have to call for help on the VHF and the only people around you are the other yachties who you just had a massive row with the night before. So that's one good reason for avoiding those kind of confrontations. And I'd say that this is something that we've learned through bitter experience yes, over the years. Yes, it's taken us a long while to learn that. Yeah, so we, when politics starts to raise its ugly head, which often it is ugly, we try and steer the subject away. We pretty much always do that. It's, it's just not worth it anymore. Sailors are a microcosm of the whole world. You've got alt right, you've got far left, you've got everything in between and up and down and everything, you know, and who knows what the people you're talking to believe in. And it's probably not a good idea to know some of the time. Uh, yeah, and I think also, um, again, like in life, you learn to like and love people who have different ideas to you, have different opinions. And, you know, if, if you're like that anyway, then of course you're going to be, uh, you're going to enjoy the traveling and being on a boat because you will be traveling to new places and, diff and have different uh, cultural experiences. So you have to be open to that. So yeah. Go on. I, I was just going to add, I think there's something more divisive than um, politics and that'd be anchors. <laughs> what, what's the best anchor? Guaranteed that will divide the bar in half. Yeah. And we won't say any more on that no. subject. Rockner. Anyway, um, Seagull Dreaming. I like the comment. Politics, religion and football. Another good reason to do long sea passages. How true. Yes, absolutely. Good point. Politics is always ugly, Desmond. Yep. Yes. yes Are there fellow just... cruisers who you try to avoid? Yes, but we're not naming any names. And not many, to be honest. No, none that you would know. No, anyway. no one, no one here, and no, no, none that you would know. Uh, but then we, we also need to talk about locals and discussing politics with locals. And I think in our experience, uh, it's very seldom raised, and we don't raise it. Politics. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've got the language problem for starters. Yeah. Um, politics is a complex subject, so mm -hmm. if you have a conversation with a local person, invariably it's going to be in English, and it will be in their English um, and so it won't be to the same level I guess. Yeah you can miss a lot of nuances and I, I know we've been in conversations but we've actually got the wrong end of the stick so you have to be quite careful. But if, the, if the English is good um, yeah we tend to ask them questions to get their take on what's going in their country or their area of their country and you would be amazed how different that is to what you read in the media social media media whatever the media fake media whatever you want to call it the stuff that we're fed and that we read about uh you know in the guardian new york times or whatever it might be there's very little resemblance to what you get on the ground and we've got a really good example of that haven't we in, Th in, in thailand th in thailand yeah the, the military coup which happened when we were doing our refit uh the only impact that we saw was that there was a curfew the midnight curfew uh which we broke because Nobody took any notice no of it cared. in Satoon. It was reported all over the world as this huge military coup and there was blah blah blah. There were a few bits and pieces going on in Bangkok but the owner of the boatyard went there while it was happening, came back, he didn't see anything. The only thing he said to us is, when the banks close, you know there's a problem. As long as the banks are still going in Thailand, no problem. So we weren't hit by it at all. It was completely different on the ground where we were. Yeah, I was just thinking another situation in the Maldives and I said that I would try and research the name of the Prime Minister at the time. Oh, anyway, there was a situation in, in the Maldives where uh, we were led to believe that the opposition, opposition leader who was eventually jailed, um, supposedly for completely the wrong reasons, uh, had a huge uh, level of support, maybe with a big minority in the, in the Maldives and also a bigger support outside of the Maldives. And yet, the, a lot of the local people that we spoke to, it turned out actually had quite strong support for the, uh, the incumbent. And it, it, again, it was a bit of a shock, wasn't it, to see how we were led to believe one thing. And then when we got the insider knowledge from local people, there was actually a different sense altogether. So, yeah, if we were careful, if we weren't careful, we would have completely misjudged the, the situation. Yeah. yeah. So I think we just need to look at a few of the questions that are coming here because I've got two people saying no reply bye, and I've tried but you're not answering bye. So look, give us give us a break. We're just doing this for the first time. We're trying to answer the questions that were given. So let's have a look. Let's see what we can do. 
Okay, uh, right, where are we? What is the best way you found when dealing with local authority? Smiling. Smile. Polite. Yeah. Do as you're told. Really, that was simple as that. So, Thunder8855, who says bye, because we haven't replied. Uh, let me just see if I can yeah. find your... This, this is what I don't it's like so about fast. live broadcast is, you Put know, you now have to sit down and watch us scroll through. Okay. And I, where is it? Why do you choose Esper as your boat name? How do you came across this name? <laughs> OK, well, it's not really part of the pros and cons, which is what we were trying to structure the whole the whole thing. We wanted a short name that you could say very quickly and easily that could be understood in pretty much every language and said in every language around the world and in a nutshell esper was the name of the computer in blade runner our favorite movie there you go yeah he's gone you missed it there's no he's come back he says yeah you reply <laughs> randy west is the other one that went randy try again mate we'll look for it remember you've got that super chat so click that dollar sign and put a little something in there and it will flash up and then we really will see it and we stop and drop everything yeah. and answer it. And we are trying to pick the questions that are pros and cons kind of thing about liverboard, you know, so. Um, no, it's not costing too much. Don, uh, who's asking about live streaming, the costs really are the setup costs. Uh, the cost of internet connection is relatively cheap, about uh, 60p for one gig i think no. yeah. yeah this one uh, um that just came up what are your views from dan rothschild about corrupt officials well like um that's quite interesting pros and cons of checking in and out of a country you do get corrupt officials you definitely do get corrupt officials um picking the brains of other yachts is quite useful when you're moving from country to country that it, when they've come the other way you can get some idea of what to expect usually with corruption we just pay it because over here in Southeast Asia it's not very much um, and it's just in some places it's expected. Well I was going to say what we consider to be corruption sometimes is the normal way of doing business so uh, whether we like it or not sometimes uh, you may get a heads up on a country you're about to visit by other yachties who will say when you go and see Mr. X or Mrs. Y in so and so position in that office, be prepared to slip them whatever. And if that's how it works, that's how it works. It, you know, it, 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 and it, it's, it's, it's something that we don't, it took us a long time to feel yeah, comfortable about. Yeah, but it just makes life easier. Uh, and there are some countries, I'm not going to say the ports because I don't want to get into trouble, where if you don't pay it, you just don't get in. But they're not any of the countries that we've covered in the in the vlog. It's earlier on in, in life, so uh, yeah, just be careful. Got lots more Je coming uh, in. Jeff, we're going to be talking about food any minute, so that's going to be on uh, uh, an up and coming uh, topic. Larry, um, talk about language barriers and how you deal with them. Yeah, really interesting one that one. When we were in Turkey, we learned a bit of Turkish, and we were able to converse slightly in Turkish. We were in quite a tourist area down in the south, so a lot of people did speak English, so we got away We got away with it there. In India, it's fantastic, they all spoke English. Malaysia, they all speak English. I mean, we are lucky being English, as it's becoming the international language, and we're a little bit lazy. The only language I speak in any kind of ability, with any kind of ability, is French, and that helps sometimes with other sailors. Um, so yeah it can be a problem we usually try and learn the basics please thank you i don't know how are you good day whatever in most languages that we go to we do try and learn something although we have been we weren't very good in thailand just reading through some more comments from philip who asks cruise in southeast asia what places do you suggest to avoid perhaps part of the philippines yeah it's big piracy over in the philippines at the moment so all of the people that we know around here nobody's going up to the philippines because you can't get there the sea to get to the philippines from here from borneo north very very dangerous so can't go there at the moment we um, of course we came through the red sea and across the arabian sea in 2010 when piracy was at its height and we never want to do that again mm -hmm. Uh, we would love to go back to that area, wouldn't we? Yeah, just going back to interacting with people. Uh, Spin Dreams asks, how often do you get checked for your sailing license and qualifications? So we're talking about interacting with local officials here. 
uh, you have to show your ship's license when you uh, check in with the harbour master. I think that's correct. Um, but other than that, there are no qualifications that you need. It's very rare that you need qualifications. I think maybe in France they ask for the ICC and that's about it. Yeah. But in terms of qualifications, you don't really need any. You can buy a boat and sail. So it's just your ship's license. And sometimes if you go into marinas, you might have to show insurance yeah. as well. Yeah, insurance. We. Oh, just go back up. I just want to say, um, ah. Someone's asking about provisioning. Here we go. Yeah, I just it's said we'll, oh, we'll, we'll oh, answer oh, that oh, in a minute because we're going to talk about foods in a minute. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, Secretary. Yeah, who else? Thunder, yeah, sorry, you did say earlier that that dollar sign thing isn't available in Malaysia. Sorry about that. Um, how often do you get checked for your insurance? Again. Um, not, not very often. Not, not often. Hardly ever. In Europe, but not, not since Europe. Anything else that we were going to talk about interacting with uh, with with people? Um, uh, well, your brother sent a, <laughs> sent us a question, didn't he? Oh yeah, because he was uh, out on the Cambridgeshire waterways recently on holiday. Yeah, he's been, he's been on a boating holiday, and he came back with quite a poignant uh, question. Yeah, I mean, basically, he said we came across a mix of boat owners, some friendly and helpful, and others rather quiet and pretentious. Was I, was I doing that? Oh, uh, you're just blocking them off. Oh, okay. Um, especially when sharing a lock with us how do you Liz perceive and react to hired and chartered yachts on your travels yes chartered yachts uh, versus liverboards interesting one yeah so he's seeing it from the other end he's chartering a boat and he's getting the the evil eye off uh, some of the, the snobby liverboards I suppose uh, I have to say there is a standing joke among us liverboards stay away from charter boats uh, because they have a reputation of badly anchoring and being on a big booze cruise blah 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 and I think that's really unfair it's just it's just not true you will get people who um, have just chartered a boat for the first time and may not be particularly knowledgeable but a lot of the time people who are chartering boats know probably a lot more than some of the liverboards that we know certainly some of them are really really experienced and very very good sailors so absolutely impossible to generalize and very unfair yes and i, I would say actually they're very refreshing people to meet uh, yeah when you meet them they're on holiday they're having on a great holiday, time they're, they're really positive. good company <laughs> yeah. so we want more charters over here and i just want to say mind rover pal thank you very much very kind of you keep appreciate what you're that. doing thank much you appreciated back can you go back up there was there was something i wanted to answer yeah yeah I know uh, from Stephen Van, I know you often say you would not choose to live on a cat. Do we? Do we often say that? I can't remember. Anyway, if you were offered to swap to either a five year old 50 foot mono hull or a 50 foot cat, which would you choose? Mono. Nah, I don't know. It's a really interesting one. It's interesting because we're about to answer cats v monos in our next QA. I've got a whole load of things we want to say about both. And I did some research and I'm. A little more warm towards cats since I did the research so uh, look out for it. it should be in the next week or so <laughs> oh Tim's online good to see you Tim thanks for the <laughs> question uh, anything else you want to say about interacting with people I, I, I would just say that I always say this that living on a boat is like living on a street mm. the people that you share the street with you have one thing in common and that is you all live on the same street yeah, in, in a, a house, house usually or a flat whatever. after that it's a gamble you can't choose who your neighbors are in the same way that you can't choose who some of the yachties are that you interact with so sometimes you might have clashes i would say on the whole the yachting community is a very very positive community yes. they are there to very helpful so helpful so resourceful and quite often people will at a drop of a hat uh, come to the rescue yeah. uh, without question. Something is it an innate thing that yachts seem to want to help each other. I mean, you you help each other. When we started out, people were helping us. We're now at the stage where we're helping them. Hopefully, these videos are helping. And certainly, people we meet all the time. Recently, in the marina, when we were stuck with a battery problem, we had so many people helping with uh, ideas and so forth. It's a brilliant community. Yeah, yeah. Um, lots and lots of oh, different questions yeah here. I like Bruce is higher from Seattle hello Seattle is it raining um, of course there are so many things that can happen on a boat but what is your single biggest worry the single biggest worry oh 
so many. Uh, Hitting a rock or coral reef. Going aground. I mean, going my, aground. Yeah, my biggest worry is Jamie falling off and me not being able to get him back on. Um, that's the oh, that I had that worry before we came on the boat, and it's still the one that's there. It's not very big in my mind, but if I had to grab onto one big worry, that would be it. Certainly when we're out at sea. All the man overboard manoeuvres in the world, you know, practices are great and they're wonderful, but you're usually doing them in flat, calm water and it's all very nicely contrived. When you're out in that bloody great big ocean with those great big waves, big winds, whole yep. different ball game. Uh, just got to give a shout out. We've got a couple of people from Turkey. And uh, as our as our says, uh, hi Jamie and Liz, Meraba, Nasil <laughs> Siniz. Uh, how how are you? We're very well. How are you coping living on the boat with the heat? We are going to ah, be talking about yes. that, and in fact, I think that's going to be our next subject. It is. Let's go on to it. Let's do it. Good. Yeah. Nice segue. Right. Yeah. yeah. So professionally done. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the next heading was bad weather, the tropics, and the heat. Uh, right. Well. Yes, weather, weather, weather. It's, it's all about weather when you're it's sailing. It's something that we wanted to cover off because we are aware that a lot of people that want to start out and move onto a boat are very worried about weather and especially bad weather. And it's a, it can be a big con. It's a big concern that people have. It is. So let's talk about the pros and cons of uh, weather. Well, first of all, let me read out Guitar Bloke's question ah, yes. <laughs> from yes. one of our Patreons. Uh, we had our first solo sail last week and had a sail tangle incident, which we resolved in 20 knots of wind. Well done. Did your incident off the Maldives in a three-day storm cause you to rethink your future as liverboards? It was the worst storm we've ever been in. It was the worst sailing we've ever done. And it goes on from what you were sailing, saying. Hmm. Go on. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by, oh, okay. by some more questions. Um, uh, did it put? Did it? It didn't make us rethink our future as liverboards. Oh, However, yes. it did yes. give us three days to really concentrate the mind on learning how to sell this boat properly. It was very, very, very difficult. We could not get back to the Maldives. We got completely banged off course by a massive gale that lasted for nearly three days, and pushed us and pushed us a thousand. Wasn't a thousand miles? Was it? No. no. <laughs> it was several hundred miles off the coast of the Maldives and there was no angle that was going to get us back. Uh, you got really down at one stage um, uh, yeah, thinking I, we were I, going to end up in Australia. Yeah, we almost did end up. In fact, at some we point we, we actually thought, considered not bothering to check out the Maldives because we physically couldn't get back to land and just going to Australia because that is the way that we were heading. I have to say, and I'll be, I could be completely honest here, there was uh, one moment when I and when it was fleeting it was just like right that's it I've had enough mm. I, I just I just can't deal with this mm. anymore mm. but it was fleeting it lasted 20 seconds mm. Mm. but it was there mm. um, but that was after days of being mm. hammered and uh, abused by mm. the weather but um, it's extraordinary actually how the adrenaline and the years of practice kicks in in a situation like that yes. we were doing an hour on an hour off half an hour on half an hour we really didn't sleep um we had all kinds of things going on um but the pro out of all of that the good thing out of all that was that we have tremendous confidence in our boat she's a real proper blue water cruiser if she can handle that and it for example it was so bad that I preferred night sailing so I couldn't see the weather in the day it was just too scary there was that and there was secondly we learned to can't absolutely trust each other in our ability to, to to sail that boat in really bad weather so that was good um, so more on um, if you carry on looking I'll just carry on the answering uh, particular questions here so yeah that was a good one I wonder how bad the humidity is in the boat and how you deal with it and someone's just thought about um, dehumidifier from Randy West and somebody else about uh, air conditioning Johnny Mango yeah tropics no matter which bit of the world you're in the tropics it's hot all the time and it's humid all of the time and it is a real con because you have so much water everywhere that the mold grows like mushrooms so you have to really try and air your boat as soon as you can as soon as there's no water no rain you open everything up you get the sun and you just try and dry things up all the time we haven't had a humid dehumidifier here we had one in turkey in the winter when it got very very wet and cold and i got bronchitis that's the only time we used dehumidifier 
God knows how much that would cost in power and electricity to run. Um, we did get an air conditioner when we were in, arrived in India because we knew we were going to be there for a while so we got an air conditioner there and we've just got rid of the little portable one that we have used now and again but on the whole I would say you have to learn to live with it. The, the dehumidifier subject did come up actually recently on a Facebook uh, cruising forum and someone was asking about should I get one and most people were saying yes it's a great thing to have and I think possibly and I'm guessing here it's because it's not on all the time when we were in India we had a it was wasn't just one of those window AC units it was uh, it was a proper one so uh, a two-piece one we had it on the entire time we were there in India and it acted as a dehumidifier because it had that dry setting which took the moisture out I think that contributed to some of the de delamination yeah. problems that we had Agreed. in the boat I do wonder even if it could possibly even cause osmosis I I'd be very interested to know yeah. if you've got a, a dehumidifier or an AC running all the time so anyway so we tend to avoid that we did have one which we'd use in the marinas and we've we've done away with it now and we're in a marina right now because we're uh, in between passage and we've not needed one it's we've, yeah we've kind of got used to it haven't yeah we? yeah uh, there was a question here about putting up vlogs of frightening waves. Uh, I've got Will's answer here where he says they don't put up vlogs of frightening waves and weather because they are busy trying to keep Esper afloat. That's actually true, Will. Remember, with us, it's just the two of us. Uh, Delos did a fantastic uh, video about them going across some really bad weather, but they've got a lot of people to do the video in while you're, while you're steering. Because when the weather's that bad, you can't use any kind of auto helm. You have to hand steer. Uh, so one of us is steering like bugger. And the other one is trying to snatch some sleep if they possibly can and literally that's all you have time for we took a couple of stills yeah as we came in, it's, it's we? a shame isn't it and oh, we've, be, we've got we've a bit got better now we've got a bit better at trying to record stuff when the shit hits the fan yeah. and it actually happened recently yeah. and when the shit hit the fan the first thing i said to liz was get the camera rather than get the spanner or whatever it was and i said don't want a bloody camera let's just get it fixed <laughs> panic, uh, huh? as for big waves you will you will be seeing those you know we do plan to cross over the indian ocean ourselves possibly next year uh so we're going to be hopefully doing some big blue water cruising again yeah we weren't geared up then that was before we did any videoing really it was all stills uh, but of course this time from now on we're going to be having gopros everywhere we're going to have a lot of footage going on of the ocean around us uh, so that will be really exciting uh there's a good question here from claire dixon who asks about lightning and yes yeah. boats are often hit by lightning and my understanding is is that it is one of the highest claims on insurance in southeast asia for boats yeah. um, it's a difficult one we got hit in india and lost P the radar pto fte uh i don't know how you pronounce your name but my dehumidity my dehumidifier can run off 150 watts that's pretty good actually yeah that's really good i mean that's running off an inverter yeah impressed with that don't suppose you could send us the details could you, send you link. <laughs> yeah i think i still come down and i believe this before we hit the tropics and i still believe it now that it's better to acclimatize yourself there are a lot of people who live in these zones all year round and they're not constantly walking around with uh, air conditioners yeah you get it in the big buildings most people just get on with it you walk a little bit slower you take things a little bit easier you mm. do your, you do all your manual work in the mornings or in the evenings in the middle of the day you try not to go out and you do spend all your time in the shade uh, because you can be in your lovely little bubble of air conditioning and dehumidifying on your boat we've got to get out there sometimes um, when you're at anchor of course it's different because at anchor you will pick up the tiniest tiniest little breeze with, with your hatches open so it's a little bit better but if you're stuck in a marina as we are right now uh, it can be really quite hot. A uh, question here from Seagull Dreaming. How does the roller furling handle big winds? Uh, copes pretty well. I think, as you know, we have a new sail, uh, a new foresail, but very old furling system. It's one of the first generation furling systems. It's about 30 years old, made by Hood. Um, we've replaced the bearings and, it, and it's OK. It, you have to be careful of course uh, if you get the wrong point of wind it can be nigh and impossible to furl away yeah. so you've got to kill the power out of the sail in, in order to furl it away obviously the bigger sail you have the uh, less um, efficient it's going to be in heavier winds when you start furling more of the sail away uh, but so far because we're cutter rigged we're we're pretty well set up for heavy weather yeah 
That's what she's designed for. So, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's good. Um, any more questions on bad weather and the tropics? I have to say, did you say this? As Brits, we are used to dreaming of sunshine, sand and sea and sangrias from our cold, <laughs> clammy... Yeah, anyway... That's well, what we dreamed about it. for years as being here, so we can and hardly we, moan about it. Can now we? we live that life. <laughs> so, what, which would I prefer? I have to say, I would prefer the tropics because I love the fact I can wear stupid, ridiculous floral shirts, shorts, and flip flops. Haven't worn socks and shoes for a very long time, and it's a luxury. So, on the whole, we've got lots of pros, lots and cons uh, with the weather, especially in the tropics, but ultimately this is good weather i like it a lot yeah i like it too i like being hot i hate going back to the uk because i'm cold even in the middle of winter just notice the sailing road hi guys nice to see you when we come into the east coast of the us we want to do that we've had a mm. dream i'm a londoner i'm a city girl and one of my dreams is to sail into new york <laughs> i want to do that one day so once we get around south africa and across i think we will we do want to come to the east coast of america definitely definitely it's up there uh, on the list it is up there on the list uh have you ever ooh. had any debris in the indian ocean yeah, if there's a problem yeah good question uh, we hit it's little, a worry we hit little things we know people who have hit bigger things um but yes it is a worry it's a concern not much you can do about it when you have to do a night passage uh but if you can you try to avoid them so. Bow thruster or no bow thruster? The person has just gone. I don't know how to control this. Jamie has controlled bow thruster or no bow thruster. That's all you ask. We have no bow thruster. That's it. Yes. They're good if you've got them, I should think, particularly when you're parking up in a marina. <laughs> okay. Yes, have yes, we yes, done yes, on yes. that subject? I yeah, think I think we have. It. Yeah, the next one's going to be food. Okay, but before... in a minute. Yes. We're going to talk about food, but. Before that, we did say we we're going to mention our shop we have a shop uh it's been just a very small just a few people have known, known about it for the last couple of months because we were testing it it was something we were asked to do people kept saying they wanted t-shirts of this that and the other and where do they get that and how do they so we thought we looked into it and we found a place in the us where they will print one-off shirts you just so we come up with the designs we put them in there they print them off and send them to you and they're brilliant they're really good so we're now launching it completely properly to everybody we have you can see some on screen now we've got all kinds of t-shirts got the one i'm wearing <laughs> which is jamie's design it's the uh, it's our espatai t-shirt we've got the last patreon t-shirt which is now available to everybody we've got some fabulous espa t-shirts that's the original espa logo you can see it there right now and it comes in big men's sizes also comes in women's sizes for the first time ever we've now got nice shaped female t-shirts in beautiful colors uh, the logos are either in black or in or in orange and the t-shirts are in all these great colors on top of our esper stuff we've also chosen well you chose some really lovely vintage prints um very ancient prints of cephalopods and octopuses and things like that and uh, tweaked them and colored them and we've used those as well on t-shirts which we've seen and they look great and also we've on, put the them mugs. on the mugs so we've got mugs we've got two sizes of mugs regular size mug and a really big mug the big ones the big mugs amongst us uh that's the there you go that's the esper t-shirt uh, sorry that's the esper logo and the target logo on mugs there also we have coming up next we've got some canvas prints so if you like the um the vintage photos and, and drawings that we've found you can get them as canvas prints as well all of that's there at the moment see how it goes if you're interested go ahead and order will there yeah, be a link we, somewhere we've had uh, we've had good feedback on actually on the people that have bought the items and they said it is good quality stuff we've got some photos actually which i will put up of some of our friends wearing them our patrons particularly and also if there's anything that you would like to see we're open to suggestions so there may be some designs that appear on the t-shirts that don't appear on the mugs for example we've got some other product lines that uh, we want to sell as well uh, further down the line so we've got some ideas but uh, we'd, we'd like to know what you think of it but anyway this is the url right 
but as a special special deal only for people watching this live stream yeah. we've got a little uh discount coupon code yeah. and it is this we are not publishing this anywhere else so make a note of that it is if you just think it's ftb yt live which is basically follow the boat youtube live so think of it that way so when you go to purchase an item from the shop you just put in ftb yt live uh, there is a place to put your coupon code in it will then recalculate your uh, final and give you that uh, discount just one thing just make sure that you have paid for shipping because yeah. just occasionally paypal misbehaves yeah. and it forgets the shipping yeah. and what happens is is that you end up paying for the product but you don't pay for shipping and then not your fault yeah actually, but it, it but won't a... it won't get delivered yeah. that's the problem yeah. so just keep an eye on that but anyway uh, we have to confirm them, the orders to go through, so I can double check that as well when I uh, tick the orders. But yeah, uh, enjoy it. Look at it. Followtheboat.com forward slash shop and uh, let us know what you think. Yeah, let us know if you've got ideas for new products. We'll see how this goes, but new products, we're always li li listening. If you're interested, let us know. I do want to say before we go on to the subject, Lil Dina One just said, Where did you get the artwork? Did you design it yourself? So, all the artwork I do bar bar the uh the the uh, vintage octopus and the cephalopods and pteropods and the octopi they those are not original. mine they are original uh they were de designed by uh, he was an explorer and an illustrator and they're out in the open community so uh if you go to the shop there's more details on those designs all the other designs the original Esper logo the target the this one with me hanging over his shoulder saying, no, don't do it like that. I want that colour. And can you just make that bit a bit thinner? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it goes. So, all right, all right, enough of that. Love the T-shirt, says Lisa. Thank you. And I'm glad it fits well. Uh, I definitely want to put some photos up of all you lot because you look brilliant in them. In fact, you've got more T-shirts than we have now. Need to get more. Mm. Next subject then is food. And I know quite a few people have asked about food. Food. And uh, unfortunately, if you asked about food, can you ask again? Because yeah, it's so far up the chat, we've uh, we've we've lost half of them. But uh, yeah, if you just read from yeah, okay. So food, so food. Yeah, lots of questions on the subject of provisioning. We are going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, food storage and food availability. And um, we've got uh, from Patreon. Mark Kessel says. For the last couple of years, you've been in Southeast Asia, which offers good and cheap meals on shore. Do you cook on board and when underway, any good cookbooks you use? And Gazamel Ultra also from Patreon, are there any foods that you don't buy because they don't keep well? Have you changed your diets at all to suit your yachty lifestyle? And exactly what provisions do you bring aboard for long passages, says Jean Vento Irland or Jean Vento Island, don't know how to pronounce it. So food, lots of things there. Lots of things. What should uh, you do first? Uh, uh, okay, let's talk about the food. Fact. let's talk about provisioning and the fact that uh, some food stuff have to be eaten quickly and other food stuffs last a long time so obviously this depends if you're doing a longer passage then you really do need to think about the, the food that, that you buy um, you could be away for two to three weeks you have to assume of course that you could potentially be lost at sea for a couple of months so you must always provision for it with that in mind Should I do my three-tiered breakdown do your three-tiered breakdown Ashraf has then. just said Read what Ashraf does Oh, say. right, okay. What did Ashraf say? Here, about uh, Asian food and using dried food. I noticed that many Absolutely sailors right. many sailors have, diff have issues with food on voyage and it's difficult to eat fresh. On the other hand, many Asian sailors say we have many dried ingredients. Uh, so, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, so, just about to say that, Ashraf. Uh, but before I say anything else, before you go anywhere, buy this book. Can you see it? It's my Bible. You can see it's falling apart. It's covered in salt water. Pages are falling out. He is a genius. He's a cruiser and he's a chef, a Michelin starred chef, no less. And let me read it out. It's called The Cruising Chef Cookbook and it's by Michael Greenwald. It is available on Amazon. I checked today. It's 20 years old, but it is still available. It's still completely up to date. Um, find it or I'll, well, I'll certainly put something in the description about what it is. Anyway, he's great. So he will teaches all about provisioning teaches you how to cook different fish with different ingredients and using whatever you find to hand so three tier provisioning 
first tier fresh food that won't keep under any circumstances not even in a fridge use that first really enjoy your lettuce your greens um, your very delicate fruit things that, that won't last very long get enough of that to last for a maximum of a week to two weeks because that's as long as it will last and enjoy it enjoy it as much as you can because once it's gone it's gone that's the first tier the next level is fresh ingredients but they last a lot more a, a lot longer can you remember what they are uh, apples yes green, green apples, apples cabbages uh, carrots um, sometimes are pretty good as well potatoes are brilliant onions uh, potatoes and onions staple of any good irish meal so there's, no, a, there's, a, lot of, there's brilliant, a lot of food brilliant. there that straight away you, you you know will last for two or more weeks yeah so you're still getting and onions are especially onions are onions really, are brilliant and get different really types of onions you know get the bigger onions for cooking and then get smaller ones to chop up and to turn into little sauces and salsas and things Talking of which, the third tier then is things in bottles, in cans, and as Ashraf says, dried food. Yeah. I mean, we have we are stocked to the gills with rice and pasta. Um, but but all I that think kind of thing. but I think the thing is though, Liz, is that this is only relevant when you are doing long Very passages, long passages yeah. and you have to remember that most of the time we aren't doing long passages. I mean, even going across the Indian Ocean, uh, we provisioned in the Maldives and ended up in Malaysia. 15 days later yeah so well, we still was. had tomatoes on board it's only when you're doing uh, say if you were going the other way from malaysia to uh, madagascar for example via i don't know i'm just trying to think you know via what's the place south of maldives more mauritius you thinking no 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 no, no. anyway <laughs> basically if you're doing extra long passages but they are few and far between and so, as you said though you could get lost you could get stuck so you do have to have plenty on board backup food and uh one question here uh from steve is cat food available in asia yes, yes we stock up on cat food cat food is in abundance the uh the southeast asians here love their animals cats especially so there are really good pet stores here all the supermarkets also have all the um, cat foods that Millie could ever want but so it's a very good question it's a really good question because we weren't sure what was going to happen so we do when we find cat food particularly the stuff that she likes we do stock up on it she has a whole locker just to herself but of course I'm catching fish all the time and she eats fresh fish it's her favorite thing yeah right yeah right that used, used to be the days it's not like that so um yeah so going back to pros and cons um one other thing that we talk about a lot is um you meat eaters out there so liz and yeah. i don't we don't eat meat yeah. um but we know a lot of yachties who do eat meat and quite often they have to run freezers in order to keep their meat frozen so unless you're nipping ashore every day to buy your meat fresh, you will have to put it in a freezer. And that, of course, has an impact on your power. So you need to think about that. If you are a big meat eater and you need to keep your stuff frozen, you've got to be running two fridges, a fridge and a freezer, basically. So a yeah. bit of a yeah. con there. Yeah, I mean, meat's the one thing that I, I would worry about because when meat goes off, it can kill you. You can get salmonella, you can get all, all, all kinds of nasty diseases. So uh, we're lucky we don't eat meat. The only meat we eat is fish. Uh, and we tend to eat fresh fish only, straight from the sea. Uh, the other thing about provisioning, of course, is in every country where there are people living, you can get food. We went through the Red Sea and we went to Eritrea, one of the poorest countries in the world. But they still had markets where they were selling things. Um, people haven't got any shoes, but you can get eggs pretty much everywhere we've been. You can get eggs, so you can always make an omelette. Um, we've got Mobile Tech, you say, super chat the water question. I don't know what you mean because I haven't seen any super chats. Super chat? There, there have been none that flashed up lately. It? I don't know, it hasn't shown up here, oh. so I don't know if you're seeing something that we're not. But someone did ask about uh, water, and it was about getting water and how they feel about uh, this is yeah, bruises, go, untreated or yeah. contaminated water can be a huge problem. Have you ever had trouble? Um, someone else asked about uh, water. So obviously we make our own water with the water maker. Um, and when we go into marinas, most marinas so far have had treated water. So they've been uh, chlorinated. 
So we tend to top up occasionally with the chlorinated water because it helps clean the tanks. But of course, as we know, we don't put chlorinated water through the water maker. So we have uh, separate carbon filters on the water maker to keep the water clean that comes through there. The, I always tell this story about that time in Eritrea, of all places, the second poorest country in the world, yeah, according just, to the United Nations. I was just talking about the eggs. Ah, well, uh, these, the water story is that we turned up there and we were offered fresh water uh, and all the other yachts that we were with said no, bar one other boat. So them and us went alongside the dock and this water tank turned up and I'd said to them, do you drink this water? And they said, yes, we drink it. I figured, well, if you drink it, then, you know, why can't we? They don't suffer from dysentery or any sort of waterborne uh, disease uh, illnesses. So we... We've drunk water in the slums of, 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 uh, of India. We've drunk water all over the place yeah. because we reckon if the locals can drink it and they're, and they're perfectly healthy, then it should be okay for us. I think people worry a bit too much about mm. water contamination. I'll be honest. Uh, as long as you keep your tanks clean, obviously as a liverboard, the water going through your tanks is, is being washed through all the time. So it's not sitting there getting stagnant. And um, we don't really treat it... Uh, I mean touch wood of course but I think making our own water really helps because it means that we're not constantly filling up uh, from ashore. Jonathan Tithecote asked a, que a question not the current one Jonathan but earlier about washing food in a mild bleach solution yes forgot to say that yeah particularly for long passages because if you just spray for instance the potatoes I'll spray them with a predominantly water but bleach solution clean them and then dry them so they're not going to get mouldy and then put them away uh, they don't go in the fridge they hang outside in a, in a usually in a basket or something but yeah so fruit and veg yeah definitely a mild bleach solution just helps to kill the stuff that's going to rot it quicker uh, design of modern life asks about health exercises on board and health check we're going to talk a little bit about health that's uh, we're, we're talking about that in the last uh, section which is going to be coming up Rob Jones, good to see you, Rob. Thanks for joining us. And sorry that you don't have the super chat on your iPad. Um, Anyone know how you can get around that? We, it, we, it's all new to us. We don't have, a, well, I have an iPad, but I've only just got it done how it works. So uh, can't help. And Adrian, Looking yes, we take uh, paper off labeling off the tins and we mark them up with a permanent marker yeah. because we put them in the bilges, yeah. which could get wet. So the labels could come off. Yeah. Yes, good point. All classic, classic stuff. And all in here as well and alan, i don't get any money for this i just love it alan brings up an interesting one about water without the minerals bland yeah. question mark people i think again worry about water maker water being so pure that it has nothing in it but you have to remember you're also eating food as well so you get most of your minerals and your vitamins from your food uh, the water simply rehydrates. Yeah, my all my water has either tea or coffee in it, so it's not as if it's just it's nothing. Mm. Um, okay, right. Shall we move on to the next subject? Have we done food? I think that's that was uh, it. That's the end of food, and we're on. I think to our second to last subject. We're way past an hour, but we'll keep going. If you're watching, if you're still interested, the next subject: boat maintenance. Jamie's favourite subject. Yeah. Yeah, I love a bit of boat maintenance, me. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to know if there are any pros to boat maintenance. <laughs> Can you think of a single pro? Uh, let's, I'll kick you off with a couple of questions. Go so on, how man. do you handle, says, a la pico ma malalanui from YouTube. How do you handle the wonderfulness of being a slave to the lovely needs of your ship and the <laughs> oppressive demands of which great place to visit next? How do you cope? How do we cope? I don't know. Mm. We're just heroes. Um, but Terry and Louise Baker, on a slightly more serious note, say, does the constant need to restore, repair and maintain a yacht, as well as needing to engage supporters like this, distract from living the sailing dream? What is the sailing dream? You know, well, we've all got different ideas. Mobile Tech, Larry says, boat maintenance is never ending. And yeah. Ashraf says, you just get better at it. And I think you two have just hit the nail on the head there. Good night, Rob. Uh, it's always never ending. You have to be prepared for this. Now, if you are like me, I'm not completely impractical, by the way. 
you know. No, it's uh, pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm I'm pretty good, but I'm I would say I wasn't like born with a spanner in my hand. I was born with a mouse in my hand. So there are a lot of jobs which I kind of have to do out of necessity, and you have to embrace that because boat maintenance will not go away. So if you don't have that kind of inclination, you're going to have a hard time, I'm afraid, and it does become a con. And if you're not careful, it becomes a bit of a barrier. Mm. So when you run into problems, and sometimes these problems can happen at the worst moment, and you need to fix them straight away. See you, this week's episode. Yeah, you can't bury your head in the sand yeah. and say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll phone someone up. I'll get someone else to fix it. So, yeah, you, you have to do it. So you have to learn some very, very basic skills. Yeah, ML. Yep. L. Uh, boat maintenance can be satisfying if you had a win and fix the job, have a beer and admire your work. That's so true. The yep. hell we go through sometimes for new jobs that we just don't know about and then we get there. And yeah, that beer afterwards, and you feel you've really achieved something. Um, the other thing is that as, as Captain Jack 69 says, uh, you know that your floating home is in safe condition. It's this is so very true. true. And each time anything goes wrong, that's another thing you've talked up to experience and another thing you know about your boat. So yeah, I mean, we're a bit flippant about it. We don't enjoy Just maintenance. Just goodbye, goodbye to Chuck, by the way. Oh, thank, bye, thank you for joining us. And he's, he's got to shoot off. Okay, so. thank you very much. Thank you. So yeah, so it's, it's not a chore. It's not something we enjoy. But there are plenty of yachts out there who love it. For them and for us, this is our hobby, doing this, doing this here with you guys and making videos. We're creatives. We love all that. We like mm. telling stories. So that's what we spend our time doing when we're not sailing. But other people love tinkering, don't they? You've got a theory. I've got a theory that I think a lot of boat owners are boat have bought a boat just as an excuse to tinker. Um, it's like your dad down in the down in the shed in the bottom of the garden, you know, tinkering away, just just playing with stuff and getting greasy. And some people just love doing that. And I tell you what, those people have perfect boats. Yeah, they really do. But they still go wrong. We know people with perfect boats that still go wrong. And Sailing you with know. Vampires does ask, do you have a schedule or do you do random inspections? Uh, Engine's probably the only thing with a schedule, isn't it? Yeah, everything else I'd say mm. is pretty random. It's yeah. as and when, you as and when know. you remember. You kind of know when you should be looking at something. Uh, batteries, I suppose, to a certain extent, which reminds me we need to do those. Um, this is slightly off topic, but I've noticed a few people are, have asked, so I'll answer quickly. I've, Al W or AIW, I think it's LW. I've often wondered how you pay for items in the various countries. Do a lot of these countries work with the American dollar or do they take credit cards? We pay in the local currency. We go to the ATM, we take the money out through the ATM. That's that's what works for us. Sometimes we use credit cards um, and we pay, again, the advice I understand from most banking people that know about this stuff is that when you pay overseas with your credit card, you should always get them to pay we charge you in the local currency get a better exchange rate that way but yeah it's not a problem it really is not everywhere you go you can find an atm apart from indonesia we had to get the money beforehand we had yeah. to order the money there are some countries where you, sh you do have to order the money and in eritrea you had to barter for it on the street because you couldn't afford to do it through a bank and that was local knowledge um yeah but all these countries they all have atms it's so so easy money in the slot money out the what's slot. more difficult of course is getting hold of boat parts in certain countries and certain locations and that can be a bit of a con to try and uh, manage to get a, a, a really important engine part or take a look at the, our windlass for example yeah um the fact that we had to get liz to bring it back otherwise we would have had to have paid huge shipping fees to yeah. bring this windlass over and we needed that windlass and there weren't any where we were at that time in yeah. the country. So again, um, quite often if you've got fellow sailors in an anchorage who may be flying in and out, they may bring in items for you, but it can be a bit of a problem. Um, having an address is also really important. Someone asked very early on about uh, ma uh, mail and having an address. Yeah, and that's, that's actually, I wrote it down, I think. That's, it was in the chat. Okay, and, and uh, Ant and Sid on Patreon did as well, they asked that question. Yeah, so it's really important to, ha to have an address in order to get your stuff delivered. And that's not always possible, so we mm. tend to use marinas that we've stayed in that know us, that don't mind holding on to something till we come back, if we are going to come back, or 
uh, letting and, people and, know ahead. And Larry says the one thing he's seen is that many places uh, they will fabricate stuff for you. Absolutely, yes. Yes, yes, they will fabricate stuff. I mean, look at all the work that we got yeah. done on Esper uh, in PSS shipyard. That was all fabricated from nothing. Most of these fishing boats around the, around the Indian Ocean, they're they're making all the stuff themselves. They're not our, sending our, away for foreign. Our parts. friends also had windless problems in the Maldives, okay. and they had to get uh, a I think it was a gear. Um, which they got made from scratch. I just want to go up to Emily. Emily, here we go. Emily Baxter. Thanks, Emily. Thanks for watching. Are there any maintenance books and manuals, etc., that you'd recommend, or is that not something you can learn through books? I tell you, we've learned where, loads where through it? books. Where loads, and we have lots of them. You're looking for Calder, which we had there. out the other day. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Hands on experience? Question mark. My husband thinks he can learn everything through YouTube. You can. You, you really can. I mean, can. That, that is true. YouTube's amazing. But you don't always have YouTube to hand no. when you're stuck, um, like we were the other night, where you've got no phone connection and you need that one really good book that becomes your Bible. It's on the other side of the room. And it was written by a guy called Nigel Calder. And I think any yachties out there will know, any yachty worth their salt will know Nigel Calder's book of boat maintenance. I forget the exact title. It's mechanical and electrical specifically. So anything to the engines, batteries and that kind of thing. Get, get, get that one book because there won't be times when you, you can't get online and you need that book. Yeah, and anything we buy for the boat, it usually comes with a manual and I have them all filed away. So I've got Jabsco manuals for all the plumbing. Um, we've got the windlass manuals. We've got we've got manuals for everything that come with the parts. Hold on to them because a number of times I've used them. Just wanted to say, uh, blah, 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 blah. anyway, somebody just bought the boat. I was uh, the book. No, I was just about to oh, say, yeah, yeah, great, I saw yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Cool, cool. I'm really pleased. Okay, so I think we can no, move, called, yeah. we can move on to our final topic, which is. An important one, I think, for a lot of people because they worry about this. And um, it is talking about healthcare. By the way, I should just say that we'll see how things go. We will just finish off on this topic. Um, we didn't want to Hello, run Greg. on and on and on and on for hours and hours and hours. But if you still have lots of questions, then we might just hang around for a bit and answer a well few done, more. Michael. So, um, healthcare. Healthcare, yeah. Healthcare is a very big concern. Um, with the people that follow us. Um, cats, Bruce wants to talk about cats. Yeah, we'll talk yeah, about we cats will, next. We will, that's going to be the last thing. So yeah, healthcare, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've got some kind of condition and you need regular med medication, I can understand that that might be a concern. I have a thyroid thing, quite common, people my age, women my age, uh, and which requires me taking medication every morning. When I'm in the UK, I can get it for one month, but I'm often away for much longer than that. So. Every country we've been to so far, I've managed to get my medication by either in India and in Thailand, just buying it over the counter, uh, or in other countries, just going to a doctor, showing them my prescription from the UK. Knowledge will be talking about it, and normally they'll just give, they just give me a prescription for it. So it's not been difficult to get regular, um, normal medication. Um, the other thing I would like to say about uh, healthcare generally is that some of the healthcare that we've come across is better than in our own country. Before yeah. we left we didn't think that. I think yeah, it's a misconception. Yeah. It's a real misconception that you think that your own country and I'm thinking about the UK in particular with the NHS which we don't want to knock the NHS but India had amazing uh, healthcare. Obviously different levels of healthcare most pretty much all of it is private but some of it's very cheap some of it's not so cheap and certainly here in thailand and malaysia we have been amazed by the level of, of health yeah. care haven't we yeah really really good i mean extraordinary you go in you have everything checked and you get the results immediately and it's cheap a lot of americans come here because they cannot believe the prices here people come here for cancer treatment mm. for hip replacements when we were in india we learned about this whole um holidaying to have your teeth done or various operations done uh, we get very smug about our own countries and that's one thing we've learned you know your own country isn't necessarily the best or the it's only very one true. Uh, just goodbye to william thank you for joining thank us you. uh adrian asked do we have health insurance we don't we looked into it. We don't have health insurance. We have 
We are covered to a certain extent within the policy of, of ESPA, of our boat insurance, and we have full repatriation and all that kind of thing, emergency stuff. We have all of that, but we don't have health insurance. If we go to America, we will get it. Uh, Stolzig has just ordered a few t-shirts and a new mug from Follow the Boat. Yay, Thank you so much. Great. He says, my family enjoy your videos. That's really good. Oh, Thank great. you so much for your support. Appreciate that. Um, and Randy asks, what about medication refills and well, taking meds into other countries? Yeah. I think we've just... Talked uh, about the refills, but taking meds into other countries, that is quite interesting because I yeah. think some meds, some countries may not like, which is a lot of places you can hide things on a boat. Do you hear me say that? Uh... <laughs> Yeah, healthcare in America is terrible, is it, Larry? Oh, okay. All I know is it's really, really expensive if it exists at all. So we will get very, very carefully um, insured before we go there. Healthcare in the UK, you can get MRSA when you go into hospital. I think you can get that anywhere. Mm. You know, it's it's, just, it's a dodgy game. Try not to get ill. Neurofen goes a long way. You know. Yeah, I think that's easy to say, and, Liz. You I'm know, being I, I, you, you are being I'm a being bit. Flippant. Yeah, I think so because. There are a lot of people out there who are older than us, uh, may yeah. already have health issues, yeah. and um, of course to keep healthy is important, but uh, I think when you're coastal it's not so bad, but if you have a heart attack, even you could be right next door to a hospital, but you're at anchor, you've got to get that person from the boat to the hospital. Yeah. So I think it's very important to have in your phone the local uh, doctor at least or the emergency, emergency number. services number that you can call up um, if not the coast guard or someone that can assist you in getting from the boat to land yeah it's a good reason for being reasonably sociable so that you have got one or two phone numbers where you can hopefully get some help one other thing one i think final thing possibly on health if you worry get a def defibrillator there are loads out on the market now for heart, you know, for heart attacks. Um, it's something we even considered. We thought your father might be coming with us on a long passage at one stage. We talked about defibrillators. A lot of yachts have them on board and they are easy to use, I believe, and it is something that we may consider for the future. Mm. Mm. We've reached the end of our planned topics. This is this is good actually. we the, the timing on this has been perfect because we didn't want to go on and on and on. I think an hour and a half is not bad for a live stream and not bad for our very first one. So I think what we're going to do is we are going to just read some of your questions and answer some random questions. I know people got questions about pets and Millie, and there's a few other questions coming through. Mm. So one more question on sorry healthcare. Really go good on, questions go on, has come up. Go on. Sailing snow, hello. Do you swallow anti-malaria pills for long periods where mm. necessary? That's a really good one. When we came through the Red Sea, we started taking. Um, can't remember. Can't remember what it was called. Anyway, you had to take one a day. And after about a month of doing this, I started to get reflux, which I've never had in my life. And one of the symptoms was um, ulcers. Stop taking them. We just stop taking them, and we don't take them here. I guess we would if we went to somewhere that was really malaria ridden, uh, which parts of Africa are, but I'm, at the moment we don't take them and most people will tell you in this area, put lots of spray and cream on and cover up. They come out during the evening usually and that's the worst time, so cover up and spray and cream, but I wouldn't rule out taking them in some countries. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to talk about pets? Or no, what I was going to do was, I think we're going to allow people to put in some yeah, questions on. here. In the meantime, we have another episode coming out on Thursday, and uh, it's quite an interesting one, and I thought you might just want to see a little teaser. relaxed we're out of the marina and this is what I've been looking forward to since I arrived back in Malaysia I always always get a bit tense in marinas but I love getting out even though we're motoring there's no wind just being out so it's just great just love it I'm happy Uh, engine just cut out. We're just floating. We've lost oil pressure. Everything's turned off. Just as we've entered the shipping channel. If anyone's coming this way, they'll be able to see us. So I'm not sure what to do. 
So that's a little teaser for this Thursday. As you can see, we had a few problems and it actually covers some of the things we've just been talking about, mm. in particular boat maintenance. Mm. So yeah, um, that comes out on Thursday. Obviously our Patreons have already seen it. Um, so we're gonna ask, ask just a few questions. Someone was asking, can you set something up so we can give you instant uh, donations, I think, which is very, very kind of you to offer. We do have the rum fund. So if you go to followtheboat.com, uh, if in fact, if you go to followtheboat.com forward slash thanks, you will see there's a thing called a rum fund. It's just basically a tip jar. It's like the bias a beer concept. So if you don't want to do the patron thing, then you can put a donation through there. We have got this super chat thing going, but a couple of people have said that either we're missing it. Uh, we saw some super chats coming in earlier. You can just click that dollar sign and you can send a super chat, which acts as a little donation tip jar type thing. But uh, it was working earlier but doesn't seem to be anymore no. but uh, yeah go to followtheboat.com forward slash thanks and thank you very much for that so uh are there any particular questions that you've seen yeah there's been generally there have been quite a few questions and, and by about the way Millie. by the way now that we've what, done beer i'm having a beer yeah if any of you are left you watch us drink beer now uh yeah there have been quite a few questions from you guys on millie and uh this is probably summed up here in uh, brian downing uh, one of our new patrons and he says we plan to cruise in the near future and we'll have our cat tigger joining us as soon as we finish stowing all of our stuff Oh, the wonderful thing about tiggers is tiggers are wonderful things. Their bodies are made of rubber, their tails are made of the springs. They're bouncy, 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 fun, 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 fun. <laughs> but the most wonderful thing about tiggers is they, he's the only one. Anyway, my question <laughs> is, how do you deal with Millie's litter box and what sort of litter do you use? We trained Millie to use the heads. Best thing we ever did. Seriously, <gasps> cat litter is such a pain oh, in the ass. Can you imagine when you're at that angle? Uh, super chat so. archie what's it thank well, you hey, archie, what's it? Cheers, mate. so, so it, it is working it's working it's working that's weird so yeah so we trained many to use to use the heads it was one of the prerequisites for having a cat <laughs> mind rover pal oh yes mind rover pal nice <laughs> Excellent. So now maybe it's, I know Adrian, it's switched she's not back drinking. on maybe it's just switched back on i don't on. know i think they're proving that it does work yeah. so elaine elaine here's to you oh well. you and me Oh, well. And uh, okay, I'll get I'll, I'll get you um, one. Yeah. yeah, so pets, pets, pets. We love Millie. She's brilliant. Kirk. Kirk. Wow, they're just all rolling in now. Hey, nice one. Give me some of that. Okay, you have that one. Yeah. We can relax a bit now. Yeah. So yeah. So that so that's the mini question um, about how we deal with the heads, and there is actually a whole Q and A on sailing with pets. And we'll put, if you, in fact, if you go into our playlist, there's a QA and a playlist. I can't remember which question number it is, but it's Sailing with Pets. And it answers pretty much all your questions about Sailing with Millie or a dog. Got to give a big shout out to the Edster. Thank you. Oh, the who's, Edster. Who's, who's a patron as well. And he's in Australia. So he, I don't know what time it is for you, Ed. I think it must you be did, morning. You did say earlier that I think you may be two hours ahead of us. So I really appreciate it, mate. Thank you so much. It's always good to read your name. Um, hope you're doing well, Dan in Oz. Anything else? It sounds like a party, yeah, I know. It's going to be. Party. Ashraf, I don't think there is any super chat in Malaysia. I did check that some. I did check earlier because we wanted we wanted to try and check it out and it wouldn't work. Yeah, so I think no, there's what, no super chat. Um, the other user Thunder, I forget, sorry, Thunderstorm, uh, was saying yeah. that he couldn't get super chat. It's chatted. not every country, so yeah. it depends on where you are. Uh, the other thing I'd like to say to Ashraf is it's half twelve now, so maybe can we make it a little bit later tomorrow? <laughs> make it eleven. Well, let's. <laughs> we'll talk to you separately. Let's talk to him separately. Um, stick to the plan. Oh, Larry, show. grabbing a beer as well. It's eight thirty a.m. Oh, nice. nice one, Larry. Oh, man. But, but he's retired. So. Yeah. Same from scratch. Oh, thanks, Thank guys. You. Cheers. <laughs> This is this is great. This is yeah, so good. This is good. We Lawrence. should have just opened a beer and you've just given us money. Um, Cheers, Lawrence. Bye, Lawrence. Good to see Are you guys e beggars? Are we e beggars? Wow, this is uh, a term that is banded around all the time. We are not e beggars. I, I think it's a very think nice term. It's not, and I think it's the it's what the haters yeah. the haters use the term e begging. Um, you know, or at least the people 
in the chat with you know the amount of effort that we put into our videos someone said the other day is doing a live stream a way of avoiding doing the editing on a video <laughs> and it's like well we're not doing it instead of we're doing it in addition to yeah and you know as you can see and i'll just show you our our little setup here um you know this is what we've just put together uh this is our little setup and you know obviously a lot of research goes into what we do and this is just for the live stream so anyway i think that's all we're going to talk about on that subject yeah we'll leave it yeah um in fact if you haven't already seen it have a look at my latest q a which is all about our sailing channel selling up that's provoked quite a lot of interest patrick franz thank you for the information and inspiration thank you patrick look lovely oh wow isn't that kind patrick thank, thank you, you so much. much and bill you didn't have to bill we're, we're, we just we just made up i'll join him with a coffee adrian jones cool there's Put a little bit of brandy in it there's that coupon again if you want to go to followtheboat.com forward slash shop put in that coupon code ftb yt live and uh, you get that discount there i'll just leave that up for a little bit so I think we could carry on going on forever like this couldn't we so yeah we could did we did you already say that we want to try and do these regularly ted uh, thank yeah, you cheers. ted cheers ted cheers to you we want to try and do bro uh, these cheers live broadcasting and different types of live broadcasting whenever we have good enough internet connection as you know it's not great out here and someone was asking earlier about connection you kind of go with the flow and it's all done through our phones which is you know obviously where a lot of the money goes as well i've uh, got great connection here in this marina what we do want to do when we leave we're not sure what day yet possibly weekend possibly monday we want to just do a live stream as we go we're just going to put the put the phone up top uh, maybe a camera i don't know uh, and just live stream us going and we thought we would just keep doing that until the internet connection goes this is from david uh who has uh been in touch with this before uh captain mortified he keeps asking about safety equipment you know i think when you asked about this i can't remember if i replied if i didn't i meant to have replied to say that i put it in the back of my mind as a possible q a to yeah camera. we need to do it so it is something we want to address so i appreciate that you are going to bug us keep bugging us as well cheers david ml thank you very much thanks and safit how do you pronounce your name is it safit Ham hamzajik hamzajik uh, where are you from safit that sounds yeah i'm not sure anyway Paid in us dollars guesses in the thank us you. Thank, thank you so you. much thank you this is the we weren't expecting this so this is just lovely really appreciate it yeah so as liz was saying we want to do uh, bob on tour more. good man thank yeah. you cheers bob we want to do a uh, live broadcast uh again so what are your ideas what would you like us to see claire thank you so much appreciate that that's so good of you it's very sweet of you claire thank you um what what would you like to see on a live on the next live broadcast yeah. because i think it's important that we have a theme yes yeah, suggest some we, themes. we need we need themes because i think it's important that we stick to particular questions and topics so that we don't spend three hours rambling on about stuff like what i'm doing right now so uh, uh mind driver pal again wow much <laughs> love from switzerland cheers chin chin. cheers good old switzerland lovely mountains <laughs> um can you just go back up again yeah. Um, uh, wait, wait, wait. We'd love a Q and A on equipment for photography. Yeah. Although you just have done a video all about that. A very I don't know, one. Larry. Was that a joke? I'm not sure. <laughs> Larry, did you see episode seventy five four? Mm. I think it was last. Recent. Yeah. It's all about camera equipment. Um, it's all about it's all about vlogging equipment actually so it's about all the recording gear and what have you but uh, are you saying that you'd actually like to have a Q&A on uh, a, a live stream on photography maybe that's what you're suggesting I don't know let me know what's uh, there's a pause here Liz what is it I think Safet just gave us ten dollars didn't he we've just been talking about him yeah but I think that's the second uh, again, one again <laughs> that is are you yeah you're too kind <laughs> so. jason cooper hello mr cooper 
Uh, outside broadcast at your nearest bar restaurant would be great to see the locals there it, and it, the atmosphere. It, it would something we'd like to do. No, but it's but. this is the problem, Jay. Yeah. Is the audio? Um, we would have to use different equipment. We could, we could, we could probably use the directional microphone. The problem with doing outside broadcasts is the ambient noise, and especially in a restaurant, that's uh, very difficult to do. And we know people who have tried to do live broadcasts from those kind of locations, and it just doesn't work. So having a controlled environment like this is easier to manage all of the audio and visual side of things. That said, uh, I know that you've talked about this before. It is something that we should do either as a Q&A or maybe in a more do more of them in our vlogs, in our weekly vlogs. I mean, obviously, we go to restaurants and we took we try and talk about food and what have you. But, uh, you know, we'll try and make more of a point of doing that. Yeah. Uh, but as I say, doing live broadcasting, in those kind of environments is very, very tricky. It's 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 difficult. So. Yeah, yeah. From the equipment point of view. We can talk anywhere, as you could probably Okay, realize. so Bob's agreeing uh, with Larry that they do want to live stream on photo equipment. Okay. Uh, I think we'll... Um, have I think, think that's going to be quite a niche one. But it, we, it'll I be think. niche. It's something I would love to do, and you will not get me to stop talking on the subject. But... Uh, We'll, yeah, we'll look, Emily, look what Emily says, and I think this is really important. Uh, thanks, Emily, again. Uh, maybe a vlog video advice, how you put together your stories, what to show, what to cut, and going beyond the equipment topic and editing. So perhaps I think we put all of that into it, then that might be uh, very useful. For yeah, people. so we have talked about a follow-up to the vlogging yeah, episode the camera. Yeah. Uh, on editing, but we didn't want to make it. There are so many YouTube tutorials out there on just editing, so it wasn't going to be just on editing. It was going to be exactly as you suggest, how we put together the story. Michael, I really hope the SJ Cam 5000X works for you. Um, I can't give you your money back if you don't like it, but I think you will like it. Or you can say it like works it. for us. So it it certainly works, works for him. us. Yeah. Oh. Quest for Thunder. Hi guys. Hello. Do you plan to leave Asia or is that where you plan to stay? We're never going to stay anywhere. We're always going to move on. Uh, we were planning to go across the Indian Ocean. That was definite goal to get to Madagascar. Things have slightly changed, which means we could go east. <laughs> oh, we don't know. We'll probably go across the Indian Ocean. We're talking about having uh, going up to India and sailing the west coast of India, which I think could be very interesting for well, people. This is the thing, you know, we're at that stage at the moment where we keep entertaining ideas and, you know, there's this idea of going up to Japan, yeah. doing what they call the sushi run. Yeah. Going back up across the Indian Alaska. Ocean uh, and then going back to India, as Liz says, where we spent three years on the boat, not doing so much sailing, but doing lots of traveling and just fell in love with the place yeah and we really kind of did. we almost want to go back not just from this vlogging point of view but we do want to go back because we love the place but wouldn't it make a great place to vlog incredible place to vlog and aren't we talking about the sailing part of it that's sailing up the west coast can hardly anybody, anybody does paul, it it can be done you. thank you paul cheers paul thanks very much um so yeah so basically no we're not going to stay here uh, thailand malaysia we've done that we've done it now we're going around to the gulf as you know in the next few next week we'll be around the gulf of thailand on the other side of the bay on the other side of the mainland so that will all be new uh, there's a possibility that we may move on from there but w the probability is that we will come back get the boat ready for an ocean passage and possibly leave early next year so that's probably the closest to a plan we've got really good suggestion here from 7836 where well, that's a funny name that uh, let's know your name by the way how about a live stream on board on onboard cooking and how much you've learned from the place you visited i really like that idea and it's something that we've been thinking about so we're thinking of like a two-tiered live broadcast thing we've got these sit down ones which are a bit more formal they're more structured but then maybe do some more informal ones just with the camera, which allows us to be a bit more mobile. Mm -hmm. And I think something in the galley is definitely worth thinking about. I think it could be a lot of fun. I keep looking at Liz, but it could just as likely be me cooking. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I really like that idea. It's a good idea. Randy! Randy. Chin chin. <laughs> she doesn't need catnip. She's bonkers enough as it is. She doesn't come back. She's out there prowling somewhere. Um, I'd like to see something on navigation. 
Yeah. And how do you read the winds to decide how to proceed on a passage? Yeah, definitely. Um, could we do that as a live broadcast? I don't see why not. Um, I think for some of these ideas, it's nice to have access together, to um, the equipment. And so I think we'd have to be a bit more mobile for that so that we could show you gear and stuff that we're using. You could, you could sit at the chart table and show them quite a bit of stuff. Yeah. Um, is it really expensive to visit countries like Japan? Yes, I think it yes. is, Michael, actually. Yes. Uh, we understand it is very expensive. We do know people that went there. They were there a few years ago. Oh, Nan! Nan! Nan, Nan. Nan. Thank you. You sent a great question and I wrote it down. I didn't read it out. And you said something like... Um, oh, we said we should add it in at the end because it was such a good question. Oh, yes. Do you feel at home? Do you feel at home? That was your question. Do you feel at home? yes yeah and we wanted to include that question yes. when we were talking about moving on to a boat because it's a great question yes uh do you feel at home and i yes. think as you can see we're suitably relaxed and of course we feel at home but it's not a stupid question but it's, it's question. so important that's so important you've got to feel at home it is our home esper is our home so when i go back to the uk i'm not at home i'm visiting my lovely family whoever i'm visiting but this is home i love coming back here it's jamie millie me and esper a mind it's rover powell home. again oh wow looking back the gnt sharing like we're... a gnt <laughs> i might man. have to get the vodka out in a minute <laughs> Well, can we make it midday? <laughs> Just joking. Well, um, thank you. Um, cheers, one day, someday. Cheers from Australia. Uh, when is United States a possibility? Yeah, uh, we do want to get to the States. It's, yeah, it's we definitely it's want to get to the States. List, we yeah. want to get down to the Gulf of Mexico. We want to go through the Panama Canal. We definitely want to do South America. I'd like to do North America. I'd like to go up to... Uh, Vancouver, I'd like to on the other side, I'd like to go to Newfoundland. So many places and so little time. Captain of SV Catfish, ahoy mateys, greeting from Germany. Good to see you. Uh, Gulf of Thailand would be good as well, says John Nicholson. I mean, yes, definitely. And you know. We'll be there next week, possibly, or the week, yeah, by the end of next week. Yeah, uh, I mean, obviously, the Gulf of Thailand is a big area. Yeah, yeah. But. Um, yeah we'll be at the, the bottom end of it maybe you're referring to the top end i think we've kind of left it we haven't left it too late but we don't have so much time left before the the seasons change once more and we have to come back yeah, around yeah. this way we're at the mercy of the monsoons so we have to think about you know do we do we make the decision to go across the indian ocean uh in and it will be six months time yeah. in fact it will be less than six months we'd time. have to leave we, if we went, we were thinking of going to the Maldives and doing it properly without a broken boat and really enjoying it and showing mm. you the Maldives. I think you'd love it. Uh, and then dropping down to Gann, which is the southern point of the Maldives, and then going in one long go to Madagascar. Of course, that would be great. Or possibly going north, the south to north and going up to India. Not really quite sure yet. Of course, Madagascar has been done by Delos for all you vlog lovers, so you will have seen what they've done. But I guess we'd bring a different perspective to it. Um, and it is somewhere that we want to see ourselves. So we would have to leave the Maldives sort of April. Yes. So we'd have to leave here to get a decent whack at the Maldives February. Yeah. You have to work back. So. I think we, we we really need to sit down and yeah. think about this. Yeah. There's one thing we need to do, one thing, and that is to construct a semi-permanent uh, waterproof Bimini cockpit uh, spray hood thing which requires some stainless work and some fiberglassing and installing some solar panels blah 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 and obviously relative sure. to the refit it's pretty small job but it's something that we have to do before we leave yeah so we, and we have to do it because we know we're going to hit very big very big weather and we have no protection up there at the moment so when you're when you're up there and when you're having to hand steer with uh, very big weather you have to stand behind the steering wheel at the moment it's full frontal assault from the from the elements and we can't do that again we did it once and we can't do that again big shout out to life of yana who says that she's new to the channel so i say she he uh good to see you and ted says oh, oh please, please the maldives, maldives. and okay. none of the sailing vlogs have done the maldives no. we've been there and we 
we loved, loved it. it. We did love it. We really yeah. did. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, come to the Caribbean, Safford. Yes, well, you know, Liz and I, maybe you know this anyway, but Liz and I met in the Caribbean. We actually met in Antigua on Christmas Day. And we've always said that it's a place that we would like to get back to for sure. But I think between here and there, there are so many more places that we must do first before we get there. So it's there, it's on the list. Michael, thank you so much. Chin chin. Cheers, Michael. Desmond, yeah, we're still here. <laughs> what have you missed? Well, we uh, wrapped everything up and we're just taking three questions now. Uh, we've been running for coming up to close to two hours, which means it will be midnight here. Not a problem for us. But we are planning to go off to Malacca for a couple of days tomorrow with Ashraf, who you've seen in the chat. Ashraf is very kindly coming to pick us up tomorrow. And we've agreed that we would be picked up at 10 o'clock and we've got to pack all this equipment away. and We've got to pack for our trip. So we're not going to run we've on for too much longer. Uh, we just uh, want to basically just make sure that we have caught everyone, including Sven, who has explained that oh, 7836 Sven. is Sven. Okay, <laughs> Sven, thank you. Any plans to go to higher latitudes? I think uh, either you asked this earlier and someone else or someone else did. Uh, yes, we'd like to. I mean, obviously, we've done sailing in the higher latitudes. The main issue, of course, is prepping Esper for those kind of conditions. And so we were just talking about a semi-permanent structure around the cockpit. I think if we went to high latitudes, it would have to be a fully permanent yeah, yeah, structure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, heater, maybe, yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, a whole load of new clothes. Yes. Just some shoes and socks. Yes, yes, a jumper. Yeah, yeah, no, but yeah, I mean, we are loving being warm and not having to worry about being wet and cold all the time. But of course, if you equip the boat properly, then yes, we could do that. We could definitely do that. And as I said before, Newfoundland is somewhere I've always wanted to go. So, you know, it's right up there. Adrian, good night. Thank you. Thank you for watching. And Life of Yana have explained it's Yan and Hannah. Ah. Now we understand. There's a picture of them. There they are. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Good stuff. So, um, should we? I think we need to wrap it up. We now do need to wrap just, it up. I think we're getting a bit tired, and yes. you're probably a bit tired of us. We're, so, we're we're tired of us. Yeah, we're, I'm very tired of you. That's for sure. Anyway, it's been an absolutely brilliant, brilliant first broadcast, and I don't know why I ever doubted it because ah. Oh, followers on youtube and patreon and through social media and all you guys that we talk to all the time you're amazing you are incredible you as i said before erudite intelligent questions um great great viewpoint on life so i don't know why i was worried about it it's been an absolute dream we will get better at it we will get better at reading the comments and answering them i promise <laughs> thank you you go we go ah oh, good I hope Tim's doing well, by the way. Uh, so, thank you for raiding the store. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, let us know what you think for other ideas. Yeah. Get in touch with us on our usual social media. You, any old, any old. You way. know, you know the deal. So, really appreciate your time. And uh, with that, we will say uh, goodbye to you. Mm -hmm.